Hey guys, uh, Jordan Mariello with Critical Start here, Senior Vice President of Managed Services. Today I have with me uh, Michael Balboni, uh, President of Redland Strategies, a former Senator, Assemblyman, and Advisor to uh, Homeland Security. Um, honored to have him here with us today. We've been doing some uh, awesome discussions about things that we're doing at Critical Start and working with Redland Strategies, but uh, today we wanted to take an opportunity uh, just uh, to talk to Michael about some general cybersecurity issues. He's a major influencer in our community. I know many of you already know who he is um, and has had a major impact even on some of the legislature that we've seen around our industry too as well. So we wanted to take a time to get some uh, thoughts from him on some of the direction the industry's going and the impact that some of the changes we see in cyber in general are having on national defense and, and the role of Senate and Congress and, and where that's going from a legislature perspective too. So we're gonna open up and have a nice fun conversation here about some of these issues. So thank you so much for being with us, Michael. Thanks for having me, Jordan. And thanks for your service to the country right. and the military. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate your support. Probably the next biggest problem in security outside the signal to noise ratio problem is talent, resources, yeah. and resource shortages. And, and so if you're not a core competency in security or technology, and then you're trying to hire security and technology professionals, well, now you're going to compete right. with organizations who are going to pay a premium for those because those resources are going to bring in revenue for those. I think it's a big problem we see out there. Obviously, there's a massive talent pool shortage, but it's also so competitive for cybersecurity resources today. So it's funny, when, uh, when I was back in the Senate, and uh, this was uh, a long time ago, 2005, 2006, I actually introduced legislation to try to create scholarships at, at state and university level for the creation of cybersecurity courses. Um, you're absolutely right, there is um, an, an absence of well-trained cybersecurity. Other nation states, like China, have basically institutionalized the cyber hacking you know, yep. they're, they're, they're training all these cadres of soldiers to learn how to do this. Well, I'm not saying we set up hackers, but I think in terms of understanding what the IT security dynamic is, we need to do a lot better of that with our institutions, our educational institutions. But in the absence of that, a lot of companies are uncomfortable with offloading that responsibility of monitoring and responding to network threats. And so, you know, first of all, it's expensive. A lot of times. Yeah. And, and secondly, you know, you don't necessarily have control of everything that you're in your environment. A lot of companies might be dealing with sensitive information. And so, you know, again, having insurance, having a, 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 a well-qualified vendor, those are steps along the way. But there should be other strategies where you can internalize your cyber defenses so that you can, rest, you can give uh, assurances to the board of directors, to your shareholders, to your customers, and frankly, to your staff, that you have worked through all the different possibilities of what cyber could mean, and you're gonna continue, you're gonna make sure that the systems you set in place will create a business as usual environment. That's a great answer. I think it's a great way to approach the board is that you're talking about, again, helping keep business as usual as the primary goal and focusing on your core competencies.